The motherboard connects all the parts of a computer system, including the CPU, hard drives and the memory. It uses the slots, connectors and sockets for this purpose. The capacity and efficiency of your motherboard depends on the type of a computer system you use. Depending on the system type, motherboards can be categorized as desktop motherboards, server motherboards and laptop motherboards. Click the various boxes to learn more. When done, click next to continue. To find out which type of system case your motherboard can fit into, it's important that you know its form factor. The form factor of a motherboard depends on its physical shape and layout. Motherboards are available in different forms, including advanced technology, that is AT form factor, baby AT form factor, advanced technology extended, that is ATX form factor, and Micro ATX form factor. ATX form factor and micro ATX form factor are the most popular ones presently. In this lesson, you will learn how to identify the components of a motherboard, explain the working of buses, explain the use of chipsets, configure and install the motherboard, and troubleshoot the motherboard. Click next to the motherboard has several connectors, jumpers and expansion slots for connecting various components of the system. Different connectors on the motherboard enable connection of different devices. Click next to learn more about connect. The motherboard has connectors to connect to the storage devices. SATA connectors connect to the SATA hard disk drives. IDE connectors connect to the IDE devices. Can you identify another connector on the motherboard that will allow you to connect a storage device? Select the correct answer and click Submit. That's right. In addition to the Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, that is SATA connectors and IDE connectors, the floppy disk drive connectors allow you to connect storage devices to the motherboard. The floppy disk drive connector connects to the floppy drive through the floppy drive ribbon cable. The motherboard also has several other connectors including a system panel connector and USB headers. The system panel connector accommodates different front panel system functions such as the system power LED and the hard disk LED. USB headers function as connectors for the USB module that can provide two additional USB ports if the USB ports are inadequate. The other connectors on a motherboard include the digital audio connector, internal audio connector, ATX 12V connector, ATX power connector, and CPU and chasers fan connectors. Digital audio connector connects to a module that provides digital sound output. Internal audio connectors enable connection to CD-ROM or voice modem card. The ATX 12V connector connects to the ATX 12V power supply. The ATX power connector connects to the ATX power supply. CPU and chasers fan connectors connect to the system cooling fans. The expansion slots are used to connect the expansion cards to the motherboard. Expansion cards are plugged into these slots to add more devices to a computer. You can use the PCI slots to plug in the PCI cards. The different kinds of PCI cards include the LAN card, USB card and sound card. You can use the PCI Express slot to plug in the display card. Jumpers are used to configure the hardware devices on your system. A jumper consists of a pair of pins and a small shunt. 
Different motherboards have different jumper settings, positioning and numbering. Therefore, you must refer to the motherboard manual when dealing with jumpers. Earlier, motherboards had to be configured using the jumpers. Nowadays, this step is usually eliminated as most of the settings are done using the BIOS setup. The motherboard in this image has the USB device wake-up jumper, system speaker jumper, system chases jumper and the USB keyboard jumper. You can use the USB device wake-up jumper to configure an additional USB device. You can set the system speaker jumper to enable the system speaker to emit a beep at the time of startup. You can use the USB keyboard jumper to disable the PS2 keyboard. You can set the system chases jumper if you want to hear a beeping sound warning you that the system chases is left open. The motherboard has several onboard components such as the sockets, ports and jacks. These onboard components form an integral part of the motherboard. North bridge and south bridge are two of the most important onboard components. These two components to a large extent determine the features and capabilities of a motherboard. The north bridge handles the communication between the CPU main memory and the AGP port. The south bridge handles data from the PCI, ISA slots and other devices that are not under the control of the north bridge. The motherboard also has several other onboard components. These include the mouse port which connects to the PS2 mouse, the keyboard port which connects to the PS2 keyboard and the serial port which connects the mouse or other serial devices such as an external modem. Other onboard components include the parallel port which connects parallel devices like printers, USB ports which enable connection to USB devices and RJ45 port which enables connection to LAN through a hub. Onboard components also include the video port which is used to connect to a VGA monitor or another VGA compatible device, microphone jack which connects a microphone and line in jack which connects audio devices like a tape player, line out jack which connects a speaker or a headphone. Your motherboard has some more onboard components. These include Super I.O. controller which provides the Super I.O. functionality Flash ROM which contains the programmable BIOS and Standby Power LED which indicates whether there is standby power on the motherboard. The motherboard also has the audio codec which enables audio playback by providing DAC channels and LAN controller which supports networking functions. Which of the following components of a motherboard would you use to plug in a PCI card? Select the correct answer and click submit. That's right. You need to plug in a PCI card in the expansion slot on a motherboard. Your computer performs tasks by delivering the information input by you to the microprocessor. The microprocessor then passes on this information to the relevant system component after it finishes processing it. This information travels inside your computer by means of buses. These buses are wires located on the motherboard that enable the data transmission. Bus speed is the speed at which data can move across the bus. Bus speed is measured in megahertz. Bus speed is one of the major factors that influence the speed of your computer. Bus width refers to the amount of data that a bus can carry or transfer at a given instant. Bus width is measured in bits. The buses on a system can be classified into two main categories, system bus and I.O. buses.
The system bus is located on the CPU. It connects the CPU, RAM, and the optional buffer memory or the cache memory. In the new systems, the system bus is also called the front side bus, that is, the FSP. The speed and the width of the system bus depends on the type of CPU installed. The I.O. buses are derived from the system bus. The I.O. buses connect the CPU with peripheral devices. Different types of I.O. buses, also known as the bus standards, have different widths and speeds. The different bus standards include the Video Electronics Standards Association, that is Visa Local Bus, Peripheral Component Interconnect, that is PCI Local Bus, Accelerated Graphics Port, that is AGP Bus, Industrial Standard Architecture, that is ISA Bus, Extended Industrial Standard Architecture, that is ESA Bus, Microchannel Architecture, that is MCA bus. Click each box to learn more about each bus standard. When done, click next to continue. True or false, system bus is derived from the I.O. bus. Select the correct answer and click Submit. That's not right. The I.O. bus is derived from the system bus. Click Revise to re A chipset is a group of integrated circuits and microprocessors. A motherboard chipset is a series of chipsets on the motherboard. The motherboard chipset controls the data transfers between every component of the system. The chipset and controllers on a motherboard are the intelligence of the system. The motherboard chipset on your system thus affects every aspect of the performance of the system. Previously, a single chip or multiple chips performed every function of the chipset. Over time, all these various chips were integrated to form the chipset that controlled system operations. A modern chipset consists of the North Bridge and the South Bridge chips. Each type of chipset can work only with certain types of processors. The type of your CPU, therefore, determines which motherboard chipset can be used on your system. Which of the following determines the type of chipset that can be used? Select the correct answer and click Submit. That's right. The type of CPU determines the type of chipset that can be used. Next, you will learn how to install a motherboard. Before installing the motherboard, first ensure that the CPU, fan, and heat sink are installed on the motherboard. Before going ahead, click Best Practices and Precautions to learn about some of the steps you need to keep in mind when installing the motherboard. Next, place the motherboard in the system case and secure it with the screws that you got along with the case. Start with a centermost screw and work outwards in a star pattern. Do not tighten the screws too much, otherwise you might damage or crack the motherboard. Next, you need to find a speaker connector from the system case. Follow the instructions on the manual to connect the speaker connector to the motherboard. Repeat this step to connect the reset connector to the motherboard. Now, fix the power connector from the power supply to the motherboard. Finally, touch the motherboard gently to ensure that it is rigid and tightly fixed. The motherboard should not bend when touched. 
Also make sure that the motherboard does not touch the system case directly. Which of the statements regarding the installation of a motherboard are true? Select the correct answers and click Submit. That's right. The CPU, fan and heatsink must be installed on the motherboard before the motherboard is installed. Also, the power connector from the power supply must be fixed to the motherboard. The system has been having startup problems since it has been repaired. You suspect that during the repair work, the cables on the motherboard got disconnected or shorted. Click next to view the basic checklists you must follow while troubleshooting. When troubleshooting, first check if the machine and the monitor have been switched on. The power connector of the system and the peripheral devices are properly plugged in the power supply junction. The monitor's brightness and contrast settings are set at the maximum or minimum limit. The cables of the various input and output devices have been properly inserted in the appropriate ports and sockets. There are no CDs, DVDs or floppies in the respective drives when starting the machine. Then try the following. Restart the machine. Switch the monitor on and off. Adjust the monitor settings. After running through the basic checklist, the system still refuses to start up. Check whether restoring the BIOS settings to their default values resolves the problem. If the problem persists, you'll have to troubleshoot the motherboard. Click Next to learn how to troubleshoot the motherboard. Remember to first turn off the system and remove the power cord. Check that the motherboard is not touching the system case and it does not bend under pressure. If it does, you must install additional plastic supports. Check the system case for any loose components or cables as these can cause shorts in the system. You should ensure that the cables aren't too tightly wound. Also, check whether all the connections are correct. Ensure that there aren't any cross connections between wires. Check that the screws connecting the motherboard do not touch any wire. If any screw has a chance of accidentally touching the wire, you must insert an insulating washer under it. Ensure that the power supply is properly connected to the motherboard. In case there are any unused power connectors, make sure that they are not touching any part of the system. Finally, ensure that all the expansion slots are in place and are not interfering with any part of the motherboard. Which of the following can cause motherboard failure? Select the correct answers and click Submit. Sorry, try again. That's not right. Disconnected or shorted cables and loosely wound cables can cause motherboard failure. Click Revise to return to the previous topic or click Next to in this lesson, you learn how to identify the components of a motherboard, explain the working of buses, explain the use of chipsets, configure and install the motherboard, and troubleshoot the motherboard.